Well, thank you again for coming on, going coming on tonight, and we honor you tonight for being for being on with us. We don't take it lightly. You chose to to come and join us this evening. Um, we just thank God for what He's doing in our life, your life, through through the ministry of Bethel Worship Assembly here. And so we're just so glad and so honored you you're with us on tonight. And so it was. Um, uh, very, I'm gonna say ironic, but God really confirmed through my wife how she was saying, you know, that you know, prayer is essential in the power of prayer, and and you know, and in joining our our prayer call on Tuesday mornings, those of you who do, I pray that they have been really impactful in your life. They they have for me, man. It just starts my week, starts starts my day, and so uh, we're that's what we're going to talk about tonight. I don't know how far. I will get um, on tonight's lesson, but if need be, you know how I do. I'll pick them next week if I have to. But we're talk, going to talk about prayer tonight, and that's that's exactly our lesson is going to be on tonight. We're going to talk about prayer. So I'm going to talk about you know the inside of prayer. We can call it the nuggets of prayer, the inside of prayer, the demonstration of prayer, illustration of prayer. But we're going to look at prayer tonight. We're actually going to look at the model prayer um, that that Jesus gave. So. Um, that's what we're going to be discussing um, on tonight. So we'll go, let's go ahead and look. So Matthew 6, um, verses 5 through 13. 5 through 13. Matthew 6, 5 through 13. And while we, we're we prayer warriors. We love to pray. Prayer is essential. We have to have a prayer life. Uh, being a children of the Most High God and being Christians and being saved, we have to have a prayer. Amen. So Matthew 6, 5 through 13, verse 5 says, And when you pray, you should not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the corners of the streets, that they may be seen by men. Or surely I say to you, they have their reward. But you, when you pray, go into your room. And when you have shut the door, pray to your father. And when you pray to your father, go in your secret place and your father who sees in secret will reward you openly. And when you pray, do not use vain repetitions as the heathens do, for they think they will be heard for their many words. Therefore, do not be like them, for your father knows the things you have need of before you even ask. And Jesus said in verse 9, in this manner, therefore pray. In this manner, therefore, pray. And so in verse 9 is where we pick up the model prayer that Jesus gave. But but before we get to the Father's, um, the model prayer, our Father's prayer, I want to look at, you know, verse 9 again, where Jesus said, in this manner, pray. In other words, Jesus was saying, with this attitude, this is how you should pray. In this manner, this is how you should pray. You should pray with such confidence. You should, you should pray with such assurance. You should pray in, in, in the spirit of self-control and authority. Why? Because God already knows. He says, your father, your father already knows the things that you have need of even before you ask. So Jesus said, pray in this attitude or pray in this manner. You don't have to come um, begging and, and pleading. No, but come in confidence. Come in such an attitude of faith, come in such an um, attitude of confidence, come in such an attitude of insurance, come with self-control and authority, knowing that your father already knows. We, we don't have to uh, beg for our life and plead our case. We don't have to do that. We can come to God in confidence knowing that he already knows. He already knows what's on our heart. He already knows what we want to say, what we're going to say, what we need to say, what we're trying to say. He already knows. And so that's one essential point I want to bring out when it comes to prayer. We have to come to prayer with such um, authority and such self-control and it's such a, a positive attitude in faith, knowing that God already knows. He already knows our heart. And so he already knows um, our concerns and, and, and our issues. And so that's the manner, that's the attitude that we have to pray. That's why Jesus said, pray in this manner. He said, therefore, pray in this, in this manner. And so when we go down to verse 9, this is, of course, where we get the model prayer. Jesus said in verse 9, to pray with this attitude, to pray in this manner. He said, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And so um, tonight I'm going to try to go and go through this model prayer and dissect this prayer kind of from beginning to end, if time allow. If not, I'll pick them next week. But this is what we're going to use for our foundation on tonight. This model prayer that Jesus gave to pray in this manner, pray this way or pray with this type of attitude. And so Jesus said, First, it says, when you come to come to God and pray, it says, say, our Father in, heart, in heaven, hallowed be in thy name. The word hollow in Greek is hagiazo, well, which may have so many different meanings and revelations, but to keep it short, it means um, to be revered, revered as into reverence of purity, of holiness, uh, sanctification, consecration, um, any, anything you can think of, of that consists of holiness and righteousness, that's pretty much what this word means. And all God's deity, his holiness, um, his beauty, his glory. And so that's what uh, the word hollow in Greek means, hagiazo. And so Jesus, when, uh, when Jesus started out this prayer, Jesus could have said that when you start out praying, Jesus could have said, start off praying um, this way, you know, our holy majestic God or or God, a holy one, or God, the the reverence of glory. But but Jesus didn't. He didn't. He didn't start out the prayer that way. Jesus started out the prayer saying, "Our Father, our Father." So it's very interesting. Interesting to me that Jesus didn't say start out saying, "Our holy God, our wonderful majestic, majestic Savior, our holy King." He didn't start out like that. He says, "Start out. Keep it simple." Just start out saying, "Our Father." And so God showed me that his importance, God's importance of fatherhood is so vital to him that Jesus listed his deity second. Oh, that is so big because it said, our father, hallowed be thy name. So the first thing God wants us to see here is that he is our father and his fatherhood is so vital to him, to us that Jesus listed God's deity second. He said, our father, then hallowed be thy name. Then he's righteous and then he's holy. Then he's pure. Then he's majestic. Um, then he, he's, he's um, holy. So and I was like, wow, God's fatherhood is that important that his deity was listed second? Whew. I'm telling you, that's that. I mean, when I, when my eyes opened to that, how important it is to God to be a father to us, that he listed who he is and all his glory and all his deity and all of his honor, his majesticness, his, his holiness, his reverence, his, his pure, his holy. And that is listed second, our father, hallowed be thy name. So our father is first. So God's of importance of fatherhood is that important that his deity describing himself is listed second. That's how big your God is. Oh, he wants to be to you. That's how big God wants to be a father to us. So Jesus says, come to God, acknowledge him as father first. Yes, he's holy. And yes, he's glory. And yes, he's majestic. But come to him, understanding and acknowledging that first he is your father, because that represents God's closeness to us. Mm. Hallelujah. And that and that reminds us of God's responsibility. That reminds us of God's role that he has to play to be the father in our life. He said, come to Jesus, come to the father saying, our father. And so that puts the responsibility, that puts the role of being a father back on God. So God is obligated to be your father. God is obligate, obligated to, to, to be to be your, your father in your life. He is obligated to play out the role and the responsibility of a father. And so when we think about a father, what are some of the roles and what are some of the characteristics of a father? What are some of the attributes of the father? What should a father be? A, a, a protector, um, a, a, a provisionary, should, should have provision, 
um, should be a, a, a counselor, should be to one to comfort, one to console. And so the list can go on and on about what a, a natural father um, should be. And so not, not only can God, it is God has, not only can God, uh, how can I say, um, fill the void of a natural father, but he is also that of a the spiritual father. And so he's all the daddy that we need. He takes place of it all. I know, it, you know, some people, you know, they have some of the issues that they have because they grew up fatherless and didn't have that authority figure in their life and had no one to lead them and guide them. But God knows how to do all of that and much more. If, if, we and if people allow him to be their father that he desires to be, he desires to be such a father that God listed his deity, the description of himself second. So that's how important fatherhood is to God. So let's look at, I'm going to go to Matthew 7, Matthew 7 and uh, Matthew chapter 7, verses 7 through 11. Matthew 7 and sort of the seven verse. Through 11. So Jesus says, Ask, and it shall be given to you. Seek, and ye shall find. And, and seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth. And unto him that knocketh it shall be opened. Or what man is there for of you whom has a son that asks for bread and you give him a stone? Or if he asks for fish, you give him a serpent. If ye being carnal, other translation says, some translation says evil. I believe King James Version actually says evil. And some translation says carnal. But if you being of a carnal mind, being carnal, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more? How much more shall your father, which is in heaven, give good things to them that ask of him, that ask of him? Jesus here um, a point, points out, first of all, God's deity. And uh, so he says, you know, God, that, that he said he's in heaven. And so first, so when I see that, when God says our father, which art in heaven, Jesus is saying he's your father and he is heaven. He's in heaven. The hallowed be his name. And so heaven points out not just a, a place. It's not to give a give us a location of where God is, but it is showing us the being of God, that he's in position of a holiness, that his being is glorious. And so here in verse 11, Jesus points it out again. He said, you know, how much how much more shall your father, which is in heaven? So what Jesus is pointing out here, that he is your father. Yes, he's holy and he's pure and he's righteous, but he's still, but he is still your father in his glory and in his holiness. He is still your father in heaven. And so when I look at this, I look at how um how God could have been such a despotic God or a despotic king or a despotic ruler. And what I mean that by despotic, you know, especially the kings of the old, old and new testament, you know, you know, how they was filled with, you know, such evil. You know, of course there was some, you know, godly kings that feared feared the Lord, but for the most part, you know, were some evil, evil kings. And so and the, so their word was the final say so. And if their rule or law was broken in the kingdom, you know, they was there was dire consequences or repercussions uh, when you violated a king law or a king or a king authority or rule. And I thought about how God could, being that He's He has all power and have authority, that He Himself could have been a despotic ruler. Because uh, he he has nobody to compare himself to. He is God all by himself. There's no king greater. There's no other God like him. There's no other uh, God that can be compared to him. And so God has some supreme and complete rule. And so, but what if God uh, was a despotic ruler? Um, and we would have to uh, really just, we would be living just by rules and, and regulation if he was. But God being God, uh, he reduced himself down because he wanted to be such a father to us that uh, that he reduced himself um, because he wanted to be a father. And he reduced himself down in flesh. 
Hallelujah. He reduced him down to flesh uh, through Jesus and, and died and died on the cross for us um, to, to, to allow us to have a, re a relationship with him, with him. And so uh, just because he's he's God and, and he's, he's, he's a holy God, he's still a father all at the same time. He's God and holy, but yet he's a father. He's God and righteous, all his power, all his authority. He's God, but yet he's a father. And he, he came down uh, in flesh down the cross to, to be a father. He, he, I'm telling you, he wants to be daddy to you. Oh, hallelujah. He wants to be daddy to us. And so I want to look at, let's turn now to uh, Genesis, Genesis 22, verses 13 through 15. Genesis 22, verses 13 through 15. And the verse says, and Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked and behold, behind him a ram caught in the thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up from the birth, uh, for the burnt offering instead of his son, Isaac. And Abraham called and Abraham called the name of the Lord. That place Jehovah Jireh, Jireh, for it is said the Lord will provide. And, it's, and it is said to be this this day in the mount of the Lord, it shall be seen. And so we know the story here where Abraham went up to the mount and was getting ready to sacrifice his son. But Abraham heard a ram in the bush and Abraham got that ram. He called that place Jehovah Jireh, uh, the, the place where God provide. And so when, when, God, um, when God becomes our father, it, it takes it takes the it takes it alleviates the opportunity um, for us to indulge into a religious attitude, a religious spirit. Because when when God does not become father, when God does not become father or the father of somebody's life, religion will. Religion will take the place of God being father. Because if God is just a God. If God is just a deity, if God is just a supreme being, then then anything else will become a God at any convenience. Ask the children of Israel. They they never they never seen God as father. They never seen God as one to have a relationship with. And that's why at any given time, anything or anybody could become a God, anything. And so if there is no relationship with with God, that leaves the opportunity for for religion um, to set in. So it, you know, so if God is just a supreme being, and, and and there's no need for relationship, then we would have to abide by rules and regulation, laws and traditions and rituals. Because but but because God requires or desires a relationship with us. We enter through grace. We come to him um, through grace because he desires to have that relationship with us. And I thank God I don't have to live by laws. I thank God I don't have, I don't have to try be, to be obedient to rules and regulations and, and rituals and traditions to maintain my relationship with God because that's what Israel couldn't keep. The, the law was there for the children of Israel to obey, to show God that, they, that he is the only true and living God, and they loved God enough to obey his laws, but they couldn't keep them. They couldn't keep the law. That's why Jesus had to come. Jesus had to come because mankind could not keep the law. And so that was a violation of a relationship to God because of obedience and sin. But then here comes the perfect lamb. Here comes the perfect lamb. Here comes Jesus Christ to be the atonement of sin, to be the perfect sacrifice for, for disobedience, to be our atonement of sin, that we can come back to God in the right fellowship and enter to in right relationship with Christ through the blood of Jesus Christ. Thank God for Jesus. But because God is a father and he desires a relationship with us, um, it, it, it caused a dilemma with the children of Israel because they never gave God their hearts. 
That's the problem with, with, between religion and relationship. Re, re, religion requires meeting requirements and meeting law and following rules and regulations. Relationship is all is a heart issue. Relationship is giving God your your heart, and that's what the children of Israel could not do. They never could get to the place where they where they could give God their heart and enter into a relationship with God. God loved them, but they did not love God back. God loved them, but they could not love God back. And God right now wants to be the world's dad. He wants to be the world's father. We know that he is, but he has to be accepted. He has to be accepted as father. Although he, he, he is father, he has a title as father to us. He is our father, but he wants to be father to everybody that will receive him. So God wants to be daddy God. Hallelujah. God, God, wants, God wants to be daddy. And God desires so much to be our father, that again, that he sent himself down in this flesh to, to alleviate uh, the law that which causes, causes the separation um, because of the violation of not being able to keep the law. Because not keeping the law uh, require not not keeping the law required um, the punishment. It required the sacrifice of lambs and bulls and doves uh, because because of the violation of the law because of the violation of his word. So there had to be atonement for disobedience and sin. But Jesus came to be the sacrifice of the sacrificial lamb. Jesus came to be that perfect atonement uh, for our, for our sin. And so Jesus desired to be our daddy's soul. That he came down to Jesus to make sure we have the opportunity to receive him as father for him to be our daddy God. Hallelujah. Uh, but Jesus um, uh, being um, the, the perfect land for our atonement and our sins of mankind, it, it gave us again such an opportunity of grace to enter to salvation, but not just to enter to salvation, but to, but to have God now to become to, to become that father that he always wanted to become. Oh man, he was already father, but, the, but because the children of Israel didn't receive him as father, God made another way for us for us to receive him as father. And I'm so glad he did. I'm so glad God made a way for me to still receive him as father through the sacrificial blood of Jesus Christ. And so Abraham, Abraham called that place. Abraham called that place Jehovah Jireh, the place where God provide. And so God, God is God is a provider, and God is 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 so much as a father. That's why I asked earlier, what are some of the attributes and characteristics of a father? Because whatever you can think of, God is that and much more. That's why Abraham called that place. This is the place where my father provided. And so God has so many characteristics. God has so many names. It's so many names to God and who he is as a father. Je Jehovah, you know, our Lord, Jehovah Barah, our creator, Jehovah Eli, my God, um, Jehovah Jireh, the Lord will provide, Jeho Jehovah um, Micaiah, the Lord who, the Lord who chastens us, Jehovah Mahazi, my fortress, and the list goes on and on and on. And I have all these names of God uh, written down on here. I mean, it is so many Je Jehovah. Um, of course, we know Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Shalom, Jehovah Mekedish, Jehovah Nisi, my banner, Jehovah Ori, my light, Jehovah Roha, my shepherd. And so and the list goes on and on. And so that's who he is to us. He is this and even so much more. So God is our father. And so it's very interesting to me that Jesus said that when you pray, come to me knowing that I am your father. I am your king. I am your provider. I'm your banner. I'm your savior. I'm the Lord of hosts. I'm your rock. I'm your righteousness. I'm your demer. I'm your mighty one in battle. Woo, glory. Hallelujah. In your, I'm so glad. Are you glad to know that he is your father that encompasses all of this? Oh, man, that's why Jesus said when you come to him, knowing that he is all of this and so much more. So the easiest, simplest version Jesus could put it, just say he's your father. Hallelujah. Just come to him to say our, our father, our father. So in this model prayer, 
Jesus gives us, he said, when you pray, say our father. And the reason why Jesus also says to say our father, because it puts us in a position of humility and the response of God's desired closeness to us. So Jesus said, when you say our father, that's, that's putting uh, yourself in, a, you know, in a, a position of humility to say, you are my father and you are my daddy. So that invites or that invokes God's closeness and God's relationship to us, to you as him being your father. So that's a position of humility to say, you're my father. You, you, you are my provider. You the Lord. You are my Lord that heals. You the Lord that gives me strength. Jehovah Uzi, you're my strength. You the Lord that provides. You are my father. You are the one that comes close to me just like a daddy should, just like a daddy should console their daughters, and just like a daddy should, cons cons should comfort their sons, so do you console me as my father, and so do you comfort me as my father. And so our father is that statement of, of closeness to God, that our father is a statement of intimacy uh, with the Lord. And the, Jesus said, then when you um, say, who are in heaven? So we read the scripture, where Jesus said, how much more will your, uh, your father in heaven not take care of you? And so Jesus again point out uh, that God is in heaven. But there again, like I said earlier, it's not to say give us the location of where God is. It's not to give us the capacity of space where God is. Jesus again is, uh, points out the glory of God his holiness, that he is God in heaven. He is God in a in a glorious place, in a holy place. And the reason why Jesus uh, uh, gives us that is to show that God is willing in all his glory, he's willing to, to, to let us share in his glory as him being, being our father. So God gives, Jesus gives this, this description of God's position in his holiness and his being of glory. And although his being of glory and his position of, 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 of his holiness is, is true, is, is, is relevant, he still dwells with us. He, God extends his holiness to us. And, and when we come to him and say, our father, that is us invoking God. That is, in, that is us extending an invitation uh, for God's presence to come dwell with us. Hallelujah. So in other words, we get to share in heaven. We we get to partake in heaven because God in his glory that is in heaven, he comes visit us, although he is, is in heaven, and although he's glorious and although he's righteous and although he's holy, he still shares who he is. He still share his glory with us. He still share his presence with us. He still come and dwell. Anybody know it's nothing like his presence? Woo! His presence brings peace. His presence brings comfort. His presence wipe tears from your eyes. It's nothing like daddy God coming to comfort you. It's nothing like daddy God coming to visit you. Oh, he's holy and he's righteous. Oh, but he still comes. He still comes to visit because he's God. He's holy. He has all authority and all power in his hand. He don't have to come and do anything. But my Bible tells me and tells you and I in John 3, 16, that God so loved this world that he gave what his only begotten son, because he loved us that much to have a relationship to come and to have that father relation with us. So Jesus here again points out that your God is in heaven. He's holy. He's, he's a being of glory and he is holy in heaven, but he still wants to be your father and he still wants to come, come and dwell with us. How great is that? How marvelous is that? How wonderful, how majestic God is in all his splendor and all his glorious, but he still will allow us to come share in his presence and share in his glory. What a father. Oh, what a father, what a father that he shares his presence and he come and dwell among us. So he is our father, but yet he is to be honored and worshiped because the Bible said, I want to go back to that word hallowed. He said, our father, which art in heaven, our father, he, he's in heaven with his glory, his power, his majesty. He's, but he says hallowed. He says, hollow be thy name. And I gave a few definitions of that word hollow or purity, virtuous, holy, glory. And, and so, but and so that list goes on and on. But but Jesus here gives us the indication that when we come to prayer, 
and we, we when we come to say our father when we come to commune with god in prayer there has to be worship there has to be a sense of worship when we come into prayer that's what jesus said hallowed be thy name glorious is thy name wonderful is thy name prayer should always include worship and the reason why prayer worship should always be included in prayer because first it puts us to in a place that first of all we acknowledge who he is we because we go back because when we say hallowed be thy name wonderful is thy name glorious is thy name that put us back in the place that your father you're glorious you're wonderful you're majestic you're holy wonderful is your name and so prayer should always include worship we shouldn't go into prayer without worship without worship we shouldn't enter into prayer with that without acknowledging who he is acknowledging that he's wonderful acknowledging that he's a provider for wonderful is thy name oh hallelujah i'm about to go in now wonderful is your name thank you for loving me thank you for keeping me you're so long suffering you're so patient you're so wonderful Woo, glory i'm trying to stop you're so kind and the list for me it goes on and on i am a wretch undone but you love me anyway you look beyond my flaws and my faults and you see my needs Oh, wonderful is your name. Majestic is your name. Splendor of all the earth. For you are the Prince of Peace. You are Emmanuel, God with me. Hallelujah. You are my comforter. You are my Prince of Peace. You are my mighty God. And so when we go into prayer, we have to go into prayer with a sense of worship. We cannot, it should not. That's what this is the model prayer. First of all, I broke down our Father. And then I talked about how God said He is, Jesus said He is glorious, and what He's in heaven, but He still shares with us His glory. And then the next thing Jesus says in this model prayer, hallowed, woo, wonderful, pure is your name, virtuous is your name wonderful is your name holy is your name oh that's a place a place of worship and i know we want to come to before the lord and give him our prayer list i know we want to come before the lord and give him our petitions and give him our requests and give him our ask lord i need lord i desire I, 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 that's why jesus said that before you ask he already knows that's why jesus gave this model prayer but he said but when you come to pray Pray with this attitude. Pray in this manner. Because when you come to God with the right attitude to pray, you'll be able to worship in your prayer. Your, your focus, your, your concern won't be your need first. First of all, it'll be who your daddy is. Woo! Hallelujah. Then you acknowledge his holiness and his deity and his righteousness. And then you and then you enter to, into worship. When you come to God with the in the right attitude, when you come to God with, with the right uh, um with the right motive and the right intent, right, the right intent of your heart. Hallelujah. And so Jesus said, Say, hallowed be the, be thy name. And then so uh in our prayer. Our prayer should always also include um, reverencing even the beauty of God, even, you know, also who he is and, and his name. We know his name is great and his name is greatly to be praised. You know, we tell the Lord, you know, you are great and you're greater in, in all the earth. There's there's no one like you, Lord, and there's there's no one above you. You know, your name is great. Your name is awesome. Your name is holy. And so we know you know that list goes on and on, but but we also should describe the beauty of who God is, because describing the beauty who God is 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 is, is reminding us, is showing us, you know, what the name of God really means to us, what what the name of God really is. That's what we said. Hallow be thy name. Describe the name of God to yourself. Ooh, hallelujah! In your prayer time, describe to yourself what that name means to you. What does that name mean to you? What does the name of Jesus mean to you? What does the name of Jesus say to you? Glory to God. How wonderful is that name to you? In your prayer time, how do you how do you how do you describe God to yourself? Oh man. Ooh, but I'm telling you, man, this is good tonight. How do you describe God to yourself? Who do you call God in your prayer time? How do you how do you describe God to your spirit? 
Oh, hallelujah. What names do you call him? He's just, yeah, he's God, but he wants to be father. Because if he was just God and just the supreme being, Jesus wouldn't have started the prayer like that. Jesus said, our father. Then he said, hallowed be thy name. So, so man, so in our prayer time, we have to, man, describe to ourselves. We're not trying to convince ourselves. We just reminded ourselves how holy he is, how wonderful he is, how majestic he is. This model prayer is so powerful to me when God opened my eyes to this model prayer. You know, the first thing, can I be transparent? The first thing it did, it really checked my attitude. If the first thing it did, because the first thing that really sticks out to me in this whole lot of prayer, before Jesus even began this, he said, pray in this manner. Pray with this attitude. Now come to me complaining and murmuring and whining. We think that's prayer. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Oh, Lord. We, people think that's prayer. Oh, my God, Jesus. People think that's prayer. But that's why Jesus said, pray in this manner, because he already knows he's your father. He, he's he's all the all the gyro that you need. He's all the El Shaddai that you need. He already he already knows. And so the thing that did for me when I'm studying this, it really checked my attitude in prayer. Lord, I need to worship you more in my prayer time. I know that we set aside time just to worship, but we can include what we but we can include worship in our prayer. We can include worship in our prayer time. Hallelujah. But as we got to come to him with the right attitude. So what I what I what I'm challenging myself to do is before I get ready to enter, enter into prayer, let me check myself. Let me check my attitude because I want to enter, in, enter into prayer, first of all, with the what with the right mind frame, with the right attitude, with the right mannerism. And so when I get to that place, I can enter to worship. I can enter to worship. If I got to forget about my day, if I got to put my problems on the shelf, because I want to come to a place in prayer where I can come in the right mannerism. Hallelujah. Where I can come with the right attitude, where I where, where the names of God just flows out of my spirit. When I just start thinking about his goodness and start thinking about his love and his kindness and his tender mercy, that 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 I could just continue on just describing to myself who he who he is. Hallelujah. So that's one of the first things this model prayer done for, done for me to me tonight is really challenging me to check my attitude, to, to check when I come to God. First of all, he is my father. He loves me. He loves you. He cares. He already knows what you need. And then because we, we are confident, we have confident God's going to provide. We're confident God's going to heal. We're confident he knows uh, how to fix it, what to do, how to do, when to do. We know God's going to make a way out of no way. That's why we can come to prayer and go to God in prayer and confidence. And we can go to God in prayer and faith. And we can go to God in prayer uh, in assurance, not doubting, not 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 uh, with disbelief, not wondering, not with anxiety, not stressed out, not trying to figure out. But we can go to prayer and bold. We can go to prayer knowing, oh, you, I come to you, my father who provides, my father who comforts me. There, there is no variable in you. You're the constant. There's no weakness in you. You're all strength. I come to you. You are my provider. There's no if, ands, or buts. I'm assured. I'm rest assured of who you are. I know you are a healer. I know you make ways out of no way. I have no I have no other choice but to enter into worship because I know who you are. <sighs> Ooh, when you really know who he is, you can really enter that place of true worship. That's what Jesus said, you know, our father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Oh, glory to God. I hope this is blessing you tonight. So Jesus says, you know, to, to, to make God's name hollow and, and to uh, lift his name up, to magnify, to worship his name and, and, and make his name beautiful in your worship. Identify the beauty of God's name in your, in your, time, of, uh, in your time of prayer. And so Jesus goes on to say, he said, our father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. And then I'm going to try to end right here because then we get into the kingdom. Oh, how mercy. We talked a little bit this. Uh, we talked about this a little bit last week, um, talking about first King 17, about the woman, her two sticks. We talked about, you know, the, the, um, the, the obedience to respond and the faith to serve, man, what a, what a word from the Lord, the obedience to respond and the faith to serve. And we was talking about um, how that led into the ending of our discipleship series. 
And I, last week I said I almost entitled that message, The Pathway to a Blessing. I almost, I was so close in titling that message on last week, The Pathway to a Blessing, because that's what the kingdom of God is about. It's about serving. It's about discipleship. Because Jesus said, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. But first we have to discover what is the kingdom and how am I in position to uh, assist the kingdom of God coming here on earth? Because if we just make it just about us, that's not kingdom. Self-centeredness and self-righteousness and making it all about us, that's that's not kingdom. That, that's because God didn't just make it about him because he so loved the world that he gave. And so the, the primary principle of the kingdom is giving. Woo, glory to God. It's giving. It's giving. I'm telling you what a prayer. Well, we, we're gonna break, we're gonna break this down and get into this next week. But what a model prayer. This is the foundation of, of prayer. And I know there's so many ways to pray. You know, that's why Jesus said, when you get ready to pray, go in your secret place. You you ain't got to let you know the whole neighborhood know that you're praying. No, you can go in a secret place and, and pray. He said, Don't be like the hypocrites, the Pharisees and Sadducees want to pray in the open and babbling and saying all these long words and they're not saying nothing. She said, No, don't take all that. Go to your secret place and said, and just when you pray, pray from the intent of your heart. Just keep it simple, just with our father. Oh, hallelujah. I'm telling you, this is such a great model of prayer, such a great example of prayer that, that and it also shows me how to pray in confidence. First, it challenges me in my attitude on how to get ready to go into prayer, to come to God in prayer, but, but the confidence I should have um, going to prayer also, just the confidence of knowing, first of all, I do have a father. I do have a relationship with, with Father, with Father God, with Daddy God. Who cares? I'm not just coming to a supreme being because, you know, by rule or regulation or by law. No, first of all, it's with, by relationship. Mm. Because that's what he died for, was for you and I to have relationship. And so I come in confidence in prayer to my Father with the confidence knowing that he hears my prayer. And, and, and you know, he knows my heart. And he knows the petition of my, he knows my request, like Jesus said, before I even ask. So my confidence, I don't pray amiss. We can't pray amiss. We have to pray in, God, in confidence that God hears our prayer, that God hears our worship. He's going, he's going to provide. He's going to meet our needs. We have to have the confidence to go to God in our prayer boldly. We have to, sometimes we're not sure if God hears us, and sometimes we don't even know what to say. And sometimes, because when, when, when we're going through so much adversity and so many problems and trials and tribulations, if it's not one thing, it's another. If it's if it's not this situation, it's that situation. It's one thing after another, and so that can affect our, our faith. It can affect our worship. It can affect our prayer life. And I've been in a place in my life where I didn't know how to pray. I didn't know what to say because of life's trials and tribulations. I felt like I was praying the same things, praying, saying the same words, not seeing any results, not getting any results. But but this is what Jesus is showing us in his prayer tonight, that you have to be confident in knowing that your father is a father. You have to have the confidence to know that your father is a good father. You know, you're not wasting your time talking to your daddy. Oh boy, you're not wasting your time talking to your daddy. You're not just you. You're not wasting your time. You're not wasting words. You're not wasting effort. You're not wasting energy talking to your father. No, you have to know in confidence that you're going to God in confidence of the relationship that you have with your father. He is my father. He's a father that cares. He's a father that loves me. He's a father that's concerned about everything about me. He's concerned when I'm when I'm sick. He's concerned when I got pain. He's concerned when I'm confused. He's concerned when I'm discomfort. He's concerned with everything. That's the because that's that's what the Bible says. He will perfect those things that concerns you. Oh man, he is he is father. I'm just I just in this message the lesson tonight, I'm just really seeing God in a whole new light. Just how deep his fatherhood goes. Just how deep his fatherhood goes. Because before for Jesus to say our father, then to describe God's deity second, oh that's serious. That God is being serious about his fatherhood. He loves you that much to tell you, first of all, he, he's your father. He desires to be your father. And so then we get to the kingdom. 
now we have worshiped, we've described to ourselves who our God is and how much we love him and how much we adore him. And now we come to the kingdom. Now we're saying, God, your will be done. Your kingdom come through me, through in this earth, your, your kingdom come. How can I make a difference for the kingdom of God to come on, on the earth? First of all, do we care enough for the kingdom of God to come on this earth? You know, because but there again, because we can't be so, if we all just so concerned with, with our issues and our circumstance, our problems that deviate us from the kingdom of God, that takes us away, that takes our destiny and our plan to fulfill in the kingdom of God away. And that's what the enemy wants. He's a distractor. He is. He knows how to bring interference. He causes distractions and run interference and want to bring discouragement and fear to get you off the plan of the kingdom, to get you off the plan of destiny for you to take part in the kingdom of God coming on earth. And yes, we all have a part, a part to play. We all have a part to play in the kingdom of God, in the kingdom of God. I, I mean, I, I love to see people blessed. I love to hear testimonies about people receiving the Lord, receiving salvation. I love to hear testimonies about people, you know, being healed and God had a, made, made a way because that's the kingdom of God on earth. When John the Baptist seen Jesus coming from afar, when John was uh, was baptizing, John the Baptist was baptizing the Jordan River, he looked up and he seen Jesus approaching him from afar. And when John the Baptist seen Jesus, he said, behold, the kingdom of God is at hand. Behold the Lamb of God who comes to take away the sins of the world. The kingdom of God is at hand. So that's what John the Baptist said when he laid eyes on Jesus, that the kingdom of God is at hand. And so Jesus said here that in your prayer, include that the kingdom, that the will of the Father be done in this earth. And what is the will of the Father? What is the kingdom of God oh, for, for salvation to take place, for healing to take place, for deliverance to take place? Uh, for a uh, financial uh, provision to take place, for for wealth and prosperity to take place in this earth through through the kingdom of God, you know that that salvation and righteousness and glory uh, be on this earth from heaven. That's that's the kingdom of God, and should we will want we should want that. We should I know, we should want our all of our family to be saved. We should want loved ones. We should want our neighbor across the street to be saved. We should want our worst enemy to be saved. We need our enemy to be saved. <laughs> we want our worst enemy to be saved. You know, we want people to be healed. We want our loved ones healed. You know, we we want, you know, uh, you know, people in our church families to be healed. We should want the kingdom of God to, to, to be on this earth. To be to be on to be on this earth. And so you and I, we have a part to play for the kingdom of God to come, for the kingdom of God to be to be on this earth. Now we do have to seek God and ask God, what part do I play in the kingdom of God? What what you know, what part do I play? What is my gift? What is my calling? And whatever it is, how how whatever it is, there's there's no small gift or big gift. There's no little part or big part. It's just the kingdom. There's no big part to play, and there's no little part to play. Jesus didn't say, you know, um, Jesus didn't divide the kingdom and said, you know, those that have a big part in the kingdom, let that come. Those who have a little part to play in the kingdom, let that come. No, he just said, thy kingdom come, thy, thy, thy kingdom come. And so whatever part you play in the kingdom of God, praise God for your part. And God may have a, a bigger role for you to play. He may he may be uh, pulling on you now and want you to expand in, in a, a, a greater part, a bigger part for you for you to play. But whatever it is, play your role in the kingdom of God. We got to be concerned about the kingdom of God because the kingdom of God is so important. It is so vital that Jesus included it in this model's prayer. Hallelujah. I mean, this prayer encompasses everything um, that we need and everything that should be in our prayer life. Oh, glory to God. It, it encompasses everything that we should be including in our prayer life. We are acknowledging who God is. We're acknowledging how wonderful and majestic his name is. It takes us into worship. And then we start talking about his kingdom. And then it says your will. Oh, hallelujah. Not my will. Oh, Lord, but your will be done. Not the way I want it. Not the way I see it. Not the way that I would do it. But your will be done. Oh, man, you, you have to be at a place of humility to want his will to be done. You have to be a place 
of humility to say your kingdom be done. In spite of my issues, in spite of the way I feel, in spite of my circumstances, in spite of my desire to want to quit and throw in the towel and give up, in spite of all that, Lord, your kingdom be done. Your will be done. Sometimes I feel like going. Sometimes I don't feel like going. Sometimes I stop, start, start, stop. But nevertheless, God, your will be done. Your will be done. And that, oh, you have to be in a relationship. You got to be in a show enough relationship. You got to be in love with Jesus that in spite of going anyhow, in spite of you want his will to be done, in spite of to continue to worship, in spite of continue to pray for others, in spite of to continue to see others blessed and others lifted up. Thy will, hallelujah, not my will, Lord, but nevertheless, thy will be done. Oh, what a prayer. Oh, I'm trying to dissect this the best I can. What a prayer for Jesus to say that when you pray, you pray in this manner, you know, for that for God's kingdom to come and his will be done. This is in prayer time. This is how we should be praying. This should be included in our prayer before we even ask anything of ourselves. Before we before we make one request, before we make one petition, we're talking about the kingdom will come for the kingdom will come and for his will to be done before we ask anything. Oh, hallelujah. That's why Jesus says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these other things will be added unto you. Seek ye first the kingdom. And so that's why Jesus here, he mentions the kingdom come and the will be and God's will be done before we even get to the daily bread. Oh, I'll talk about that next week. Even before we get to the daily bread, Jesus said, first of all, let's focus on the kingdom. You know, if you want to ask anything, ask that the kingdom be done. Ask for the for the will of God to be done. Hallelujah. So I so I bless so I pray that this bless you on tonight. I pray that this um give you some inst a little bit more insight, a little bit more foundation uh in, in your prayer life. I pray this bless you tonight in, in some way that this it help you increase your your prayer whether to enter to worship a little bit more acknowledging who God is a little bit more, saying his name a little bit more, what his name means to you a little bit more, going to God with the right, with the right attitude and in the right manner. So I, I hope this really bless you tonight because it's just, I'm telling you, it just opened up my eyes to so much. Just reading this simple model prayer that Jesus gave us, it's short and sweet, but yet so powerful and so rich. Hallelujah. So we thank God for his uh, word tonight. So praise God. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, oh God, we thank you, Lord Jesus, oh God, for, for being our father, oh God, for being our daddy, God, Lord. And sometimes we come to you, oh God, with our issues of life and all of our circumstances. And don't take the time, oh God, to remind ourselves of who you really are. Oh God, the, the names of you go on and on, Father. And so that's who you are, God, is so much more. And wonderful and majestic is your name. And you are so wonderful, God. You're so full of mercy, so full of kindness and gentleness, God. Oh God, the list goes on and on to describe who you are, Father. Oh God, so God, take this lesson of God and take your word on tonight, Father. And God, and calls, uh, oh God, our prayer, God, to go to another level, oh God, to another place, God, in the name of Jesus, God, oh God, oh God, take, oh God, our communication and our time with you, God, to help us, oh God, to enter into that holy place, Father, oh God, to enter that place of righteousness, oh God, oh God, oh God, well, where you are, God, in the name of Jesus, oh God, oh God, because you are in, oh God, in heaven, but God, you're willing to share your presence, oh God, with us, God. God, in the name of Jesus. So Holy Spirit, come and dwell. Come abide. Oh God, come dwell among us. For your word says that you inhabit the praises of your people. You come dwell among worship. You come dwell among praise, Father. And Lord, I just believe, oh God, that as we challenge ourselves, oh God, to, to take our prayer to another level in worship, Father, that we'll begin to feel your presence, oh God, and experience you, God, like never before, God, as we incorporate praise and worship in our prayer, Father, in the name of Jesus, oh God. Oh God, so we love you tonight. Thank you that you're our daddy. Thank you that you are our father. Oh God, thank you that you loved us, oh God, to come die on the cross, oh God. You knew, Father, that man was not able to keep the law. 
you knew God, we was not able to keep, oh God, the rules and God, the regulations, oh God, of the law, Father. Oh God, we trespass against your righteousness. Oh God, trespass against your, oh God, your, your holiness, Father. But thank you for sending your son, Jesus. Thank you for coming down yourself, Father, and dying on the cross to be that sacrifice, that atonement of our sins, oh God, so that we can enter through grace and come to and come through grace, Father, to get back into fellowship, oh God, and come back, oh God, to that relationship that you so desire to have with us, God, and that's to be our Father. And we receive you, God, as our Father in the name of Jesus, oh God. So we love you on tonight, oh God. We adore you, Father. And Lord, we give you glory. We give you honor and praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God and amen, amen, amen. Praise God. Praise God. So again, thank you all that joined us on tonight. We pray, I pray again that this Bible study bless you. Continue uh, to pray for us, uh, support us, lift Bethel Worship Center, a uh, worship assembly rather, up before the Lord. And so just we know God is doing great things in us, great things in his ministry, and great things in your life as well. We'll pick this up next week. I hope they bless you. I pray they hear testimonies uh, about your prayer life going to another level, another dimension. Um, from this lesson on tonight. So God bless you, and we love you more. I look for the look for uh, look forward to hear you on uh, next to seeing you on next Tuesday and joining us on next Tuesday's prayer as well. So good night and God bless you.